saw them transform Night City into a machine fueled by people's crushed spirits, broken dreams, and emptied pockets. Corps have long controlled our lives, taken lots, and now they're after our souls. This war's a people's war against a system that spiraled out of our control. It's a war against the fucking forces of entropy. Understand? See that? Fuck me. Just look at that. Do whatever it takes to stop them. Defeat them. Gut them. If I gotta kill, I'll kill. If I need your body, I'll fucking take it. In my previous video, I discussed the rise and fall of Ark Survival Evolved. I talked about the game's initial birth and the people behind it, the various updates, community support, and even the lore. But then I talked about a company. A company so greedy that they're willing to tear apart a franchise that people love so much to pieces. A company who tries everything in their power to milk as much as they can from the gaming industry, and then just leave. And yes, if you've watched my last video, this company is Snail Games. At this point, it seems like Snail are going down a checklist. There's a company that created a permanent disdain. Snail Games, Dead Eye of Norse, and Spider Slash. I'm not a fan of Snail Games. This is a list of games published by Snail Games. The company I'm talking about is Snail Games. To summarize, Ark Survival Evolved was released on the 2nd of June 2015. Following the release, Ark quickly rose to popularity and grew a cult-like following over the next half a decade. Ark saw numerous updates, DLC maps, and dinos, which eventually led to the game being bought out by a company by the name of Snail Games, whom had little to no background in the gaming industry and seemingly appeared out of nowhere. Snail Games immediately tried implementing numerous pay-to-win cosmetics and items which were thankfully retained by Wildcard. A little while later, Snail launched their own official PvP service which saw a rampant success in the ARK PvP community. However, people eventually discovered an infamous clan by the name of T, who were later caught cheating and spawning in items. This clan was run by the developers and employees of Snail Games themselves, and was later to be found banning any players that tried to stand against them. Meanwhile, ARK Survival Ascended was announced to be releasing at a launch price of $45 in early to mid-2023, which ended up being a complete stretch and was later delayed into October. All caught up? Good. The date is September 29th, 2023, and Ark Ascended is set to launch later in October. As for Evolved, the official servers were less than 24 hours away from closure. Lots of love to everyone. We're about to close down. Evolved sequence completed. Ascension imminent. Sleep well, survivors. Nighty night. But Ark Survival Evolved wasn't dead. I stated in my last video that official servers will be the death of Evolved, as it holds the largest cluster of people in the entire game. And I speculated that without official, nobody would want to play Ark. But I was wrong. Even to this day, ASE still holds a marginally high number of players on at once, which really shows the dedication and commitment the community has. And so, I tip my hat farewell to Evolved. Many hours of fun were had and I will definitely relive those memories again in the future. But now, now, it was time to see what Ark Survival Ascended is all about. Following the complete shutdown of all official servers on Ark Survival Evolved, we were left with, well, nothing. For almost a full month, we sat there waiting for a glimpse of a game that we were so forcefully meant to play. That was until October 17th, when we received the first ever in-game screenshot of ASA in its entirety, which was a picture of a raptor. Nonetheless, the community went wild, and I'll admit, this even got me hyped. I saw hundreds of pictures of people remaking the exact shot in ASE, and it was honestly just a breath of fresh air, as we hadn't received any hopeful ARC news in months. Well, that was until the Monopoly drama.
Following the previous drama regarding the pricing and distribution of the next upcoming ARC titles, a somewhat leaked document was released to the public in relation to a $4 million agreement between publisher Snail Games and a company named Marbus, whom is the parent company to the ever so famous server providing business, Nitrato. The document stated that Snail Games USA hereby grants Marbus the exclusive, non-transferable, global and irrevocable right to provide Snail Games USA and its affiliates with the official servers to host and run the games and rent out private and community servers. But what does this mean? Essentially for decades, following the footprints of previous survival and server exclusive multiplayer games, developers have bought out server farms to provide and host their multiplayer platforms on, which gives them complete control over the multiplayer side of the video game. For example, Fortnite servers are hosted by Epic Games, Rust servers are hosted by Face Punch, and Ark Survival Evolved servers were hosted by Snell Games. Games. However, you may be asking, who are Nitrado and why are they worse than any other business who provides servers? Well, the differences between a server provider and a server farm is that Nitrado basically provides a website with the correct resources to host a platform for you and your friends to play on, in exchange for your hard-earned dollars. This isn't a bad thing as multiple other server providers have had their hand in the cookie jar for years now, essentially selling their services to the community and building up their business purely by the free resources provided by the creators of said games. This is where the monopoly comes into play. If you don't know what a monopoly is, it's essentially if McDonald's bought out every local restaurant in your area and replaced them with smaller versions of the same store, essentially ruling out any force of competition from other rivaling businesses, which is highly illegal, but is exactly what Marbus is trying to pull here. This is not only extremely lazy and distasteful from Snell and Nitrato, but can cause a lot of problems with running the servers down the line, especially if there are complications with communication between the two businesses, which is foreshadowing what's about to come. I'm not a lawyer, but I doubt any legal action will be taken by anyone as the law hasn't yet caught up to the gaming industry regarding who gets what with being able to host servers. But it is still certainly clear that Nitrato is trying to be the only company in charge of making money from Ark, or other than Snell Games, of course. So businesses such as G Portal, Apex MC, wait, not them, Shockbite and dozens more will just have to sit around and watch Nitrato have the reign over the entire Ark community. But there were was still hope. While all the server providers were essentially booted out of the franchise, nothing in this document stated that individual hosts weren't able to privately purchase and host their own servers. Meaning, if you have the capability of building your own server, you will be able to host on Ark. October 25th rolls around, and news about an upcoming Xbox partner preview hits the art community by surprise, as their Twitter stated that ASA will be premiering on the upcoming livestream in the next 12 hours. Fast forward to the livestream, and this is what we got. This looked amazing. For the first time in years, ARK players were finally excited for something we have waited so long for. And even better news, it was releasing in the next hour. Or so we thought. One hour rolls by, and we were ready. Spam refreshing the Steam store, monitoring the Discord announcements, and clawing at our feet to finally play the new and improved arc. However, Dolly, one of the community managers for Wildcard, announced that there would be a four hour long delay for Ark Ascended's launch. Now, I was fine with this as it was around 9 a.m. in the morning for me, but it was around late afternoon for America. And I think it's safe to say that people were not happy. Yeah, not off to the best of starts, but but hey, I've seen worse launches to a game. Oh, and guess who leaked the first gameplay clips of ASA? It was absolute pandemonium. Copy passes were rampant. Dicks were spammed so fast the admins couldn't even keep up and they were even growing in length somehow. All jokes aside, I just want to emphasize that I do not condone any of this behavior at all. And the harassment that were directed towards the community team at Wildcard is just really sad. Even though I'm trying to make light of this situation, this was really disgraceful behavior from the art community and whoever participated in harassing Wildcard and I hope they're never welcomed back. Arc Ascended was released onto the Steam store. 
sure. We were finally playing ASA, and first impressions were fantastic. Now, I'm not going to go into the debate whether or not a game at launch should be fully playable on lower end systems, but I personally think Studio Wildcard did an amazing job to create this game. ASA has quickly rose to be one of the most beautiful games I have ever seen, or well, what I can see at 30 frames per second, and I genuinely think throughout time with updates and more high end systems on the market, all console players and PC players alike can play Ark to get- wait, where's console? As you may or may not know, Wildcard plans to make ASA release with the implementation of crossplay between Xbox and PC, which allows the players from the two platforms to play together. This won't come to any surprise to you, but ASA was in fact released to Xbox almost an entire month after the PC release, which is a very detrimental kick in the ass considering that Xbox was the one who provided the launch day trailer in the first place. So to see millions of poor souls who don't have a PC just sitting there and watching us have all the fun before they can is quite crushing and I really wish Snell, Wildcard or anyone involved were willing to just push back the launch for possibly another month because last November will forever be a massive stain for ARK in terms of revenue gain. But hey, even though we're currently in the future in terms of timeline, I'm still going to say that it couldn't possibly get worse. But it did get worse. Shortly after, Ole lost his wife. Remember before when I said that server issues could arise from lack of communications between the developers and a completely separate hosting platform? Well, somehow, and I don't know how this is even possible, people were able to access god mode on official ASA servers, forcing Wildcard to have to shut down all official servers two hours after launch. Yes, that's right, people were able to spawn in whatever they wanted and do whatever they wanted in any official server because of a setting that Nitrado or Wildcard forgot to implement. So over the next few days, ARC official servers were being flicked off and on like Nosferatu in that one episode of Spongebob. Nosferatu! But it doesn't end there. We had console players screaming in general chat. Official players spawning on the beach for the third time after losing hours of progression on the first day. And solo players. Well... They were just having fun. Thankfully, Wildcard was quick to troubleshoot most client-side issues while letting everyone know in real time. However, I have no doubt in my mind that 90% of all issues caused on ASA's absolute tragedy of a launch was all due to one single company. 22 hours later and the verdict was in. For the first time ever, half of all ARC players were split. You either loved the game and were willing to look past everything and continue playing, and the other half were just simply done with ARC. Now, I respect the decision to stop playing and potentially move on to something newer and something that makes you happier. I do not respect Nitrato, however. It was just past 24 hours of ASA's release, and the dev kit was finally given to all players. This dev kit allows all players to do whatever they want with ARC's base code, which was newly set in Unreal Engine 5. This allows for modding, animating, and most importantly, server hosting. As the dev kit released, thousands of individual server hosts quickly sprung to action, purchasing third-party servers from the previously mentioned farms and building their very own community-run unofficial ARC servers. But something was wrong. Along the announcement of the dev kit, Nitrado released a now-deleted news article on their website further re-clarifying the rules on self-hosted servers. Essentially, as stated on the article, you may be entitled to to receive a free temporary non-commercial server license or partnership for Ark Survival Ascended. And then, right underneath this statement, reveals multiple ridiculous standards that these individual hosts will have to follow, just to have third-party platforms running on ASA. Basically stating that you're going to have to pay a large sum of money to Nitrato while having a following of over 10,000 active followers and 5,000 impressions per content piece, which is absolutely insane. And to add one final cherry on top, a DRA was placed by Nitrata to stop any of this from happening. Oh wait! A DRA, which means Diameter Routing Agent, is essentially an application placed by a business to redirect certain types of traffic from using their services. And in Ark's case, this traffic was any type of server hoster that wasn't them. Nitrato specifically listed extremely vague and misleading rules before Ark Ascended's release, specifying that players may be entitled to this or could possibly have access to that, and then laid their real standards onto the community, which had already dwindled since the game's launch 24 hours ago. This immediately 
ultimately backfired completely for Nitrato, as the outrage was undreamt of and something I had never seen before. After the immediate wave of hate, Marbus' CEO then went on to publicly state that without this loan, ASA would never have existed. Gee, great work Nitrato. Thanks for ripping us off of Evolve completely and forcing us all onto Ascended. Thank you for then taking away all chance of monetary gain from other companies or individuals, and thank you for clarifying that Snail Games didn't spend a dime on Ascended. Because instead of Snail spending that precious DLC money where the corporation resides, they're instead spending it on a fucking car company. Now, I've been keeping a crucial detail from you guys this entire video, something that I didn't mention in my last and something that has been detrimental to the state of ARK. I just want to clarify yet again that I think all employees and associates with Nitrata and even Snell Games deserve respect. They're just doing their job and what they're told. I do however want to shift all your energy and expectations to the CEOs of these two corporations. Most importantly, a man by the name of Shi Hai. Now, if that name doesn't ring a bell to you at all, Shi Hai is the man shown in this clip. He is the overlord to everything and the big bad to this entire video. Every company must have an owner, every corporation must have a CEO, and every ARC tribe has to have a leader. And funnily enough, the leader to the previously mentioned T-Clan just so happened to be Shi Hai. Although previously other tribe members were seen cheating and duping on Conquest, Shi Hai seemed to be the most prominent member. I want to yet again give credit to Kona Voice and his incredible video where he goes into detail regarding just about every lawsuit, server attack, harassment, and egotistical meltdown that Shi Hai has done in the past. But to briefly name a few, <gasps> multiple DDoS attacks, multiple bans, thousands of items spawn in, thousands of dinos spawn in, multiple server rollbacks, several lawsuits, which one of them involves the producer of ARK, three spin-off games, ARK source code copying into other games, multiple cases of him threatening to fire wildcard employees, and even a little sprinkle of racism. On top of all this, ARK's quote-unquote funds that were provided by the also generous Nitrato were, in fact, most likely the only funds that ARK probably ever received. As Shi Hai, yet again, was caught with his pants down wasting 26 million dollars to try and start up a Chinese Tesla company named Indie EV, which filed for bankruptcy and will be shutting down at the end of this year. Again, I highly recommend that you check out Kona Voice's video, as he states the absurd and heinous shit that this guy has allegedly done. There is also another channel that gets mentioned by ARC YouTubers like Baba Yaga, by the name of Wilfred Advencula, who, as of writing this video, is a 66 subscriber channel, who basically just uploads archived and leaked messages from Shihai to wildcard devs and even Snell Games employees. Now, I haven't looked much into whether these are real or not, but there are a lot of sources that prove these to be true, so I recommend you check out some of these videos if you truly want to get deep insight into how Shihai acts as a person. It's people like this who I truly question if they deserve the luxury of money and power over a multi-million dollar company, and how they act to the people underneath them, but then get so butthurt that people are starting to notice your schemes just to deal us people's home Wi-Fi's and possibly cause more damage to Wildcard just because you were getting raided in a game you clearly don't give a shit about. But hey, it's just a dinosaur game. A dinosaur game that's been around for nearly a decade now and will hopefully be around for decades to come. The truth of the matter is we can't do anything but sit and laugh, which is something I hope you could achieve by watching this video. Because at the end of the day, who really cares? As humans, we move on. And if Wildcard continues to prove to be a more than competent studio, we're in the right hands. Almost. The best we can hope for is that Snail Games and I try to eat themselves alive behind the scenes, which is essentially what they're currently doing, and ARK gets potentially passed on to a more competent publisher. This will be my last video regarding Snail Games and this entire scandal. We've already been through the eye of the storm, and I think everyone is just ready to either move on or simply just enjoy the game. I want to give a big thank you to HOD, Neddy the Noodle, Kona Voice, and much more for voicing your opinions publicly and speaking about a matter that has spanned beyond ARK itself. I want of these videos to be an overall brief summary of everything that unfolded because I truly believe that this has got to be one of the most interesting conundrums I have ever seen in a game that I've played for years. And also views. So thank you to the art community and thank you to everyone that watched this video. And I'll see you all next time.